This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Welcome and thank you for joining Sister Power. Our topic for this episode is Strength of a Woman. Sister Power's vision is that everywhere, women everywhere will learn to live as sisters, to respect each other's differences, to heal each other's wounds, to promote each other's progress, and to benefit from each other's knowledge. This afternoon, our Sister Power VIP guest, Vicki Ho Takamine, Kumu Hula, Pua, Ali'i, Alima, Executive Director, Pa'i Foundation. Vicki is recognized as a native Hawaiian leader for social justice issues and the protection of the natural and cultural resources of Hawaii. She is a co-founder and Executive Director of Pa'i Foundation, an arts organization that is established to preserve and perpetuate Hawaiian cultural traditions for future generations. Welcome to Sister Power, Vicki. Thank you so much for having me here. Oh, it's great to see you again. Thank you. That's right. March is National Women's History Month. Yes. And Sisters in Parting Hawaii was very honored to honor you as one of the Women Making History Crystal Awards Social Justice and Honoree. Thank you so much for that. We had a lot of fun. Oh, with that was that. that was a wonderful experience. It was a wonderful day with some really wonderful and great women. Very powerful women. Very powerful women. You were definitely one of them. And we're moving on. So we have a lot to cover. Yes. So let's get started. Um, this afternoon, Sister Power would like to cover several topics pertaining to our episode, Strength of a Woman. And a few of them will cover personal challenges, affordable housing, tribute to a queen that would take place on Saturday 23rd at um, the Iolani Palace. And my, I can't wait to talk about this one later on, Festival of Pacific Arts in 2020. Let's talk about your personal challenges. What major challenges has occurred in your life in the last year? Oh my gosh, I, I, I'm going to go back two years. So okay, two it's, years. It's been a challenging two years for me and, and for my family and my halal hula and all of, I, I'm so grateful for their support. So last year in February, my husband passed away just suddenly, had a heart attack and we talked about it, that that's how we wanted to go, just boom kanani and we're out. So he checked out in February of last year. And this year, my father died one year and one day after my husband. So my husband died February 28th of 2016. My dad died March 1st of 2017. Um, and just a couple of days before his ho'oleva or his uh, funeral services, I was diagnosed with invasive carcinoma, breast cancer. Um, and I had you know, I, I felt a lump. So ladies, you've, if you feel a lump, you've got to go. I went and did, did a mammogram the year before, last year. I kind of sensed that I had, it was, a, but they didn't find anything. So they said, no, nothing's wrong. I went back this year. It was invasive carcinoma. And so I, um, at my, my dad's services, I just gathered the halal and I had mentioned to my family, I said, this is going to be the last time you're going to see me for a couple of months, perhaps. I have breast cancer and, you know, the halal was busy helping. They're, they're just always there for me, supporting me in whatever challenges and whatever I endeavor to take on. And we were all devastated, but I was like, let me take care of this. If I don't take care of this and I'm not healed and I'm not back, then I'm of no use to anybody and not, not my community, the Lahui or our Hawaii and the people that I love dearly. So I just told them I'm going to check out for a, a couple of months. Um, I'll let you know how I'm doing. I'm going to go. I decided that I would have a double mastectomy. Um, and so ladies, don't be afraid of that because, you know, your insurance will cover the reconstruction. So I'm thinking like, all right, you know, I had a choice. 
I could do a lumpectomy and then have six weeks of radiation and maybe chemotherapy and I, that was not going to happen. I did want, not want to go that route. My mother had a lumpectomy and she went through chemo and radiation for almost a year and that was so taxing on her. I could not see how I could do the work that I want to do, all the things that I have you know, planned for my halal and my community and all the work that I had laid out for the next year, I was not going to be able to con continue with that. So that was not an option for me. Um, I could have done um, a mastectomy on one side and I was like, and then what? You know, you reconstruct that side and what happens to the other side? You get a lump on the other side. Is it going to come back? And the possibility was that, yeah, if I have it on one side, I might get it on the other side. So I just opted, let's just do a double mastectomy and let's just get some new babies put in and mm. figured that, you know, they'll be a lot perkier than the ones I have now <laughs> <laughs> so, or I had then because um, I haven't done the reconstruction yet. We've got little spacers and I go and I get pumped up a little bit every, every couple of weeks and they put a little 50 cc's in it. I, I am fine with sharing my story with everybody. I would like you to be more aggressive and more involved in your own personal health care so women do not be afraid. And I'm fine with you calling me and asking me for, you know, give me a call. You need, you need, I'm not, I'm not the, this is, may not be the best route for everyone, but I will tell you that I have never looked back on that decision. I think it was the best decision for me. I had my mastectomy on April 6th. I was at my Mama Wearable art show on May 14th. Um, and I am kicking butt as it is now as we speak. So I'm back in the saddle and I, I give me two months to recover and I'm back. It's I'm, great. I'm sitting here. This is why the name of this show is Strength of a Woman. So this is how you cope by sharing your stories and encouraging other women to speak about it and ask questions. Yes, ask questions, talk to your doctors, find out the best route for you. Don't be, and I'm very, you know, I think I'm kind of coup A in that. We, we, coup A is mean to stand up mm -hmm. and, and be, I, I want to be as aggressive, aggressive as the cancer will be aggressive if you don't take care of it. So take care of that first and then you can take care of everything else afterwards. So, so where are you in your life now? Where am I in my life? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I am, um, the pathology report came back negative. So I have no chemo, no radiation. I see my oncologist in six months. I'm scheduling, I'm, I haven't scheduled reconstruction yet because I'm too dang busy to do, okay. to do it right now. But um, I've got to figure it out soon. When, when is the downtime for me? We, um, right after that, we were right into MAMO, the uh, MAMO wearable art show. Our, MAMO is a Maoli arts movement, so we do a whole um, series of activities and events that support Native Hawaiian art and artists. Uh, we have our gallery at that Ala Moana Center, Pa'i Arts Gallery, that's open. That We hold our juried exhibit. We change the exhibit out every six weeks. So that's, that's wonderful if you want to look for Hawaiian art that's at Ala Moana Center every single day, seven days a week. It's a wonderful place. We do artist talks there and share stories. Uh, we've had slack key guitar players. So check our website and we can, you know, get hooked up with some Native Hawaiian art and artists. I am just excited to um, be back and, and helping to serve our Native Hawaiian community and support that community in general. I'm happy to be here I and am, talking to you. I'm excited. This, it's just as if when I saw you at our first annual Women Making History, the same, and I think it's all about attitude. Talk a little bit about attitude. I have a really positive attitude. I, I think when we are faced with challenges, I like to, to face those challenges head on. I'm not going to step back and you know, and, and retreat from challenges. I like to really look at all the options that are laid out for me, find the best track for me to move forward. I don't like, uh, I don't like people telling me no. I'm going to figure out how to navigate myself around, figure out how to get where I want to be. I, so I really think that we need to be more, um, I think my attitude is a very positive attitude and a can-do attitude. We can do it. Together we can do it. You and I can do it together. 
So with, with strength in other women and, and empowering other women, we can, we can do that. We can be very supportive of each other. And that's what it's all about, empowering, motivating, and educating each other. Do you. Do what's best for you. Yes. Think about how, for, for me, I made the decision best uh, based on what was, I thought was best for me. And I knew the things that I wanted to get done in, this coming, in the coming year. And I knew that I would not have uh, the energy and the strength if I went through chemo and radiation. And I thought, OK, two months of recovery and recuperation. Um, and then, and, and I also really did take the time. I, I told Halal, don't call me. I will call you. Don't, you know, don't come and visit. I really need to think about healing myself and resting and recuperating. I had a nice group. I, I had my son who, you know, was able to care for me every day. My mother, my granddaughter, uh, surrounded by family that really took care of me. And I, I kind of really enjoyed sitting there in my little recliner chair and being waited on a lot of time. It wasn't, it wasn't, that was really best being surrounded by family that re you know really loves you. Yeah. And they, they, they cared for me out of love for me. And it was not, I was not a burden to them. And I knew that I wasn't being a burden to them. That everybody that supported us were, were, were really there to support. And that's what we need. And I know that not many of our women can afford that. You can't just walk off your job and say, I'm not going to be here for the next two months. I got to take care of myself. But we have to make those decisions. Because if, if you're not healthy and you're not strong, then you can't take care of other people, the people that you love. You know, my mother often told me, it's all right to be selfish with yourself. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, how can you take care of anyone else? Right. So your support system, uh, you were very blessed to have your halal and have your family here. And when I say that, the reason why I'm so compassionate about women helping women, this is why Sisters in Park Hawaii is so important. People like us, like me, mm -hmm. move here from the yes. mainland. You don't have family. Yes. So I, in, I encourage people to call Sisters in Power in Hawaii. We make sure you get to your radiation treatment. And if I can't do it, I can call someone like you, call your organization. And we, we just help each other out. Yes, and, and we have some really great um, health care systems out there. So I was fortunate to be um, with Polly. Momi Women's Center, mm. and I, the minute I got diagnosed, I got a patient nav navigator that called me. Hi, I'm your patient navigator. Do you need any help with your kid to getting to your appointments? Do you need help with preparing your food or cleaning your house? I was like driving you, chauffeuring you to and from your doctors. I was like, oh no, I'm really good, but I'm so glad that there is. Yes. They made all my appointments. I didn't have to really worry about all of those things. He said, you have an appointment with your plastic surgeon. You've got an appointment with your, you know, your cancer surgeon. Here's your, and here is all your schedule of appointments. If you can't make it any of them, call me and I'll rearrange them. I was like, wow. I was impressed. Now this is how a queen should be taken <laughs> care of. Absolutely. And we do have literature here that um, if anyone wants to contact you or contact the uh, American Cancer Society, and you see we have on our, yes. our pins. Our pins, we yes. We have on our pins. I'm, I, am, I am so pleased to have been asked to um, be the honorary chair for the Susan G. Coleman Race for the Cure, October 15th. So come out and walk with us. You can join Team Vicki. So I just formed my own little team. Um, I'm, I'm yeah, Team Vicky. Team Vicky. Okay. And meet us there October 15th. We're going to be walking for the cure for on uh, Susan G. Coleman Race for the Cure. Now, what time should we be there October 15th? I think it's early, like 7 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, we're going to do the opening oli. We're probably going to do a little hula and, you know, so. And, and uh, if you're a survivor, wear your survivor's shirt. Come with your ohana. All right. Well, when we come back, yes. we have more to talk about. Yes. Strength of a woman. Stay tuned to Sister Power, and we're going to talk about some more exciting things. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey. Spend the time with us as we look through and discover 
all of the ins and outs of this journey through life. We're on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. And I would love to have you with us. Come navigate the journey. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on ThinkTech Hawaii Fridays at 3 p.m. Hawaiian Standard Time. We explore environmental issues, political issues, keeping it local any way we can. Aloha. Welcome back to Sister Power. And our topic for today is strength of a woman. And we're gonna move forward and talk a little bit about uh, a subject that many people uh, are talking about, what does affordable housing mean in Honolulu? Tell us about Olaka Ilima Art Space Loft and where is it located? Great, we just are I'm broke, breaking ground right now. As we speak, the diggers are going into digging through the asphalt. Uh, we're breaking ground on a new affordable housing project for artists. Um, yeah, so for artists in particular. Oh. So it's a great, it's a 84 units of affordable housing uh, on about eight stories. And at the bottom level will be a 4,000 square foot space that Pa'i will, will manage of uh, dance studios and an art gallery so that we can showcase art from the artists that are above and Native Hawaiian artists and our artist residents. Yeah, they were showing a beautiful picture yes. of the uh, um, arts. It's called Ola Ka Ilima Art Space. That's absolutely gorgeous. In Kaka'ako? In Kaka'ako between Waimanu and Kauaiha'o Street. Just Makai of uh, the, the Pacifica where Chai's is located. So we'll be right across the street from Chai's. It'll be the back end of Chai's. But it's a wonderful opportunity for local artists to apply at artspace.org. Artspace is the largest developer, nonprofit developer of artist housing in the nation. They're in 14 different states. They have maybe 30 completed projects and another 15 in different phases of development. And they're dedicated to provide art, artist space for artists. So uh, affordable will be rentals probably between like 400 to 1500 for a, a studio to a three bedroom. How do you qualify? You qualify, it, you have to income qualify number one, and then you have to be an artist number two, so we're all artists. Yes, yes. we are. I can figure out how to make myself an artist. But <laughs> you know, show up and we're good, I think there's gonna be a screening pro process, but you can't just paint something today and say, here, I did this painting and I'm an artist. Uh, we want you to come in with a body of work, so you've got a few months that you can start working on your artwork, and you don't have to make a living off of your art because we know that artists cannot survive on their artwork alone. So most of us have a, a regular day job and then we'll do our artwork in the evening or after work, and, but we've dedicated our lives to perpetuating our art. So whether you're a fisherman or a farmer or a, a gardener or somebody that does things with flowers or crafting those and, and weaving and you know, making ohe kapala or painting, ceramics, all of the, the things we, d we use for artwork is beautiful. Storytellers, writers, composers. I think I fit somewhere in between I'm sure there you somewhere. Do. I'm sure you do. Absolutely. Yeah. This, this is exciting. Well, let's move on with sure. Strength of a Woman. And what I'm loving about this, what we're going to speak about next, is tribute to a queen. <gasps> Let's chat about that. Yes. That's a free concert. It's a free concert on the grounds of Iolani Palace on September 23rd at 6 o'clock in the evening. So bring your lawn chairs, bring your hali'i, your mats. You can sit on the grass and watch, uh, watch a performance in the front of Iolani Palace. This is the 100th centennial um, anniversary of the passing of Queen Liliuokalani. 
So in November 11th of 1917 was when she passed away. And recognizing that for the last three years, I've been talking to my halal about it and other people, we need to do a concert of mele, of songs, chants that were written for and by Queen Lili Uokalani. So I've been kind of collecting mele chants and songs and wanting to do the things that were, she wrote over 300 songs. She was a prolific composer that was collected in a, a it was I think Dorothy Gillette and Barbara Smith, uh, university professors, collected, made a collection of her and published a book of the Queen's songs. So we've got a lovely collection on paper in a book, but I would love to have that shared with the general public as she shared it with the music. So we're featuring the Galliard String Quartet who did a, an album of her songs. Robert Casimero, who's a fabulous mm, singer. One of my favorites. Yes, Kathy Foy and Marlene Sai, and then Halau Hula. Naturally, my Halau Hula, Pua Ali'i Ilima, Robert's Halau, Halau Hula, Halau Naka Malay, and then Mapuana De Silva, my Hula sister, and her Halau Mohala Ilima, um, as well as Michael Pili Pang, um, and other vocalists, Aaron Salah. But I, we're weaving all of that through storytelling by Moses Goods, so he's bringing all of that together. Moses Goods will be telling the story about some of these songs, and then musical accompaniment by Mahi Ehi, a wonderful Hawaiian trio. So come and join us. Bring your picnic, and e lay it out on the, on the lawn of Iolani Palace. The palace will be lit up. It'll be a wonderful stage, and, and Nola Nahulu and her choral. Lili Uokalani was the choral director for Kauai Ha'o Church. The current director, Nola Nahulu of Kawai Ha'o, will be bringing the, her choir, Kawai Ola Onapu Kanileo, to sing some of those choral arrangements that Lili U composed for the choir. It'll be a wonderful evening of choral music, chanting, Oli Hula. Before we move forward, let's give the date and the time and the place yes. one more time. September 23rd. Iolani Palace Grounds, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. A free concert of Lili U's music. Oh, it sounds heavenly. I always call Honolulu the bus stop to heaven, but we'll be in heaven on yes, that day. Yes, yeah. Beautiful evening concert. Oh, wonderful. What I, another subject that I'm excited about that we can briefly talk about is Festival of Pacific Arts 2020. Here we are. Yes in 2017 and we're talking about a wonderful event that will take place in 2020 and congratulations on your appointment to be the festival director for the Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture. Tell us all about this. This is a wonderful gathering of indigenous peoples of throughout the entire Pacific region all of Oceania. So there are 27 nations that belong to the South Pacific community. In 1972, they recognized that there was loss of traditional culture and arts, and they wanted to make sure that we celebrated our indigenous people and the cultures of the Pacific. So the South Pacific community um, decided that they would have a concert, a, an event, a festival to celebrate the indigenous people's arts of the Pacific once every four years in a Pacific Island nation. So this festival rotates throughout the entire Pacific. Last year, 2016, it was in Guam. I was fortunate to have attended in 1985 when it was held in, in Tahiti and then 2004 in Palau and then 2016 in Guam. So Hawaii, this will be the first time we're hosting it here in Hawaii. How was Hawaii chosen? Well, you have to submit a bid to sure. host. And okay. they rotate it through Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. So if you don't get the bid now, you've got to wait eight years before you, you apply again. And I was like, no, we've got to get it now because I'm getting too old to do this. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> but we're, you know, it's, it's a, a wonderful opportunity for all of our Hawaii community not just Hawaii, Hawaiian community, but our entire community and residents of Hawaii to come to really be the hosts of about 3,000 delegates from throughout the Pacific. So about 100 delegates from each of the 27 nations will be arriving in Hawaii for two weeks. And they will perform, they will share their visual arts, their cultural practices through, in, in we're planning a village, 
where they every day they will be demonstrating their art. They'll be selling some of the art that they brought with them. They'll be doing food demonstrations. We'll have forums and and discussions about climate change and the sure. things that are affecting Native people. We expect that heads of state will come. The ministers of culture will have their own meetings while we're going while we're there. But every single day and every evening there'll be cultural demonstrations and performances. So they bring the best from their islands. They actually audition for dancers and performers and rehearse for almost a year to come to this festival. It's, it's not similar to the Mary Monarch or anything like that. It's, Is it Mary, Monarch, it's Mary Monarch on steroids. Oh, okay. <laughs> So there is, in, in, this, in the way, it's not a competition. Sure. It's just a sharing. So you will have um, delegations from Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, American Samoa, Palau, you know, um, Guam. We've got Rarotonga, Cook Islands. It's all of every Pacific island, Australia, New Zealand. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Now, is there a particular location where this festival will take place, or is it all over Hawaii? Well, we, we have to plan that festival village. We're hoping that it will be at Kapi'olani Park area because we think that's a nice central area, and we're planning to use the Waikiki Shell for evening performances. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope that we can take um, some of our, our delegations out to the neighbor islands, but that means travel, air travel. It means a lot of fundraising for us you know the the organizing committee and it is going to it's going to be costly so we're looking for partners we have the university of hawaii we're hoping to partner with them on dorm i'm really excited about the ecumenical service that they, we're hosting because we think that we can invite you know the a, a tongan minister and a samoan minister and a hawaiian minister to share and then choose selection of the choirs and have them sing our hymns in those in their own languages and share that. So I, I'm really excited about that part. Well, I'm excited yes. as well. We appreciate you spending part of your time with Sister Power, Strength of a Woman, and we are going to declare today, September 7th, Strength of a Woman Day. Yay. Be bold, be fearless. Aloha. Aloha.